For now, let us go to the Skype machine and welcome in Filthy Tom Lawler. Tom, how are you? Hey, how's it going, Phil? It's going really well. Are you doing the Movember thing too? Yeah, I decided to shave the beard off and uh, let the Movember thing ride for the rest of the month. Very nice. So we obviously saw you at uh, UFC 154 this past week in Montreal. Tough loss for you, and it's kind of weird because we uh, we joked about the the Montreal screw job on Thursday, and some have now said you were screwed in Montreal. Do you agree? Uh, well, yeah, I haven't watched the fight. Ariel, what do you think? You tell me. You saw it. You saw the fight. I haven't been able to watch it yet. It's kind of hard to. Uh, to have an objective view for me and especially without having watched a fight and being in there. So you just tell me what you think. Honestly, I thought you won two rounds to one. Uh, If memory serves, I thought you won the first and third rounds. I believe those were the ones I I gave to you. Um, I was not surprised that they gave it to Francis for obvious reasons. Um, But that's what I I truly thought. I'm not just saying that because you're here. I, I believe I said that on Saturday as well. Yeah, I looked at uh, some of the media like reports, some of the play-by-plays, try to get a better look at what ex- actually happened during the fight. Uh, and most of the media outlets had me winning. Uh, unfortunately, the three judges did not. The crowd seemed to be, I guess, in my favor, which was kind of surprising to me. Uh, but it, to be honest, I- I'm disappointed with the way that the fight went because it, even without watching it, I, I probably don't even really want to watch it. I think it was kind of boring. Uh, And I felt like there was one guy in that fight actually trying to do something, and and that was me. So you felt like he didn't come to fight? (laughs) No. I mean, (laughs) without even watching it. I I mean, I know that's the case. Uh, You know, I don't know what he tried. He tried a Camaro once. He threw a couple body kicks. And uh, I'll be honest, I I mean, that's all that he did. You know, he he won a fight by defending for 15 minutes. And I'm not saying my performance was stellar and uh, I was setting the world on fire, but hell, at least I was trying, you know. So do you have any sort of theory as to why they would then score the fight for him, three judges? I don't know. I I mean, I guess uh, they think stifling somebody or defending means more than, you know, attempting submissions or at least, you know, trying to push the pace and trying to get them down or or try to work against the cage or – I don't want to say. Actually, they, I read a report that all three judges were American. Hmm. So I don't know if you can really call it like a hometown decision, but uh, it's tough. I, I'm not really sure why. I, I think maybe they bought into Francis Carmont hype as well. <laughs> and and so you say that you thought the fight was boring. In hindsight, I mean, yeah. other than him not engaging, which is obviously very tough. You, 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 it takes two to fight. It takes two to tango. Anything in hindsight without watching the fight that you wish you would have done? Yeah, well, knowing that I lost the fight on the scorecards, I would have just gone out, you know, I would have put my hands down and ran at him head first. uh, If that's what it took, you know, to make something happen. But, um, you know, I I mean, I guess I could have put myself in worse positions and and tried to make something happen. But even then, I mean, up against the cage, it was hard to even try for a takedown because, first of all, he's a big guy. He has a lot of leverage and he was just holding on to my wrist and, and using an overhook. He wasn't trying to defend the takedown really or throw me or get a takedown on his own it was kind of strange so for you what stings the most is that not only was it a loss it was a boring loss and that really bothers you yeah that that that's what bothers me i would have i would have been happier getting choked out in two and a half minutes like i did against chris weidman than i am with this loss you know do you do you, i mean after being in there with him and i i, I almost can't predict your answer but i'll ask it anyway do you buy into the Francis Carmel hype, whatever hype there is around him? Do you think this guy can actually make some noise at 185? Yeah, I think he's the best guy in the world <laughs> at 185. You're not impressed with his performance, right? I am not impressed with his performance. <laughs> not at all. There's, 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 nothing, there's nothing about, uh, about Francis Carmel that, that gets you excited. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> It depends when you ask me. Give me a few drinks and then ask me that question again, Ariel. Now, can we talk about the entrance? Um, what, what do we think about that? I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> I let Seth only take over this time, and uh, that's what we came out. We came out dressed up like Anderson Silva, if you saw him in the crowd. It looked pretty similar to him. <laughs> now, a lot of people were actually – they actually took you seriously. I didn't. Took you seriously that you were actually going to dress up as me, and they thought 
you were dressing up as me, but that I don't look like okay. that. I, I don't wear those glasses and the bow tie and all that. You weren't you were an Ariel Hawani, were you? No, no, I wasn't. And I was actually I was going to uh, try to do some shopping and get my Ariel Hawani look for today, but I literally just kind of walked in off the street. Uh, I rushed home so I could do this interview. So that that didn't happen either. But you have something to look forward to in the future, at least. Well, yes, uh, th- that gives me a reason to to bring you back on the show. So I that, that's very smart on your part. So what what were you going for with that? And don't worry, we'll get to the Wayans in a second. But uh, what were you going for with that? Because Francis is obviously uh, a black man. You wanted to say I- I'm fly for a white guy. What's going on? What, like what, what was the message that you were trying to send? <laughs> That wasn't the uh, the real <laughs> reasoning behind doing that. Oh. Although, uh, you know, if you look at him and then look at me, you definitely probably think he's the scarier of the two. Um, it, it was just, you know, it's a song. It's a it's a nerdy kind of song. The other, I wanted to do the Team America theme. I've said that uh, on some interviews recently. That got shot down. The other idea I had was Weird Al's Canadian Idiot. But I didn't really want to offend every <laughs> Canadian that's in the crowd because a lot of the Canadians are nice. So, uh, like I said, I let Seth Petrozelli take over, and it's hard to find costumes a lot of times. And um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, quote unquote, fashionable shops in Montreal, and uh, they have you know nerdy looking clothes as we're going through and looking at the boutiques. So uh, he took over and he said, you know what, we should do that song and, and come out like nerds. I have heard that you only like to shop for your outfit. Uh, weigh-ins and fight night while you're there fight week like you don't like to prepare beforehand why do you leave it all to the last minute because it might change every time i, I mean i turn my music in the day before the fight oh, okay. this time uh you know like i said you gotta you gotta feel it you gotta let it take over your body you can't force these kind of things ariel like the shock master that was in me <laughs> i've been the shock master for weeks for months and it, and it finally took over when i was at the weigh-in Okay, now let's talk about that. Good segue there. For those that don't know, what were you doing on Friday? Who, who are you paying homage to? Uh, I was paying homage to uh, who would be popularly, mo- most popularly known as Tugboat from the old WWF. However, he has been also immortalized as the Shockmaster from early WCW uh, days. Before WCW was really popular, uh, they hyped him up. They hyped up this guy coming out, the Shockmaster. And, you know, I think it was a great gimmick. You know, let's throw a fat guy in a stormtrooper helmet and be dazzle it and have him come out with a crappy cape on. Um, and, you know, he was fortunate enough to trip over a two by four or something <laughs> as he made his entrance and provide us with one of the best moments in not only uh, sports entertainment history, but I think in entertainment history as well. How did you come up with this idea? Like you're sitting at home and you're like, I'm, I'm going to dress up as a guy who stumbled on TV 20 years ago. That there's a very good chance 99% of the people in the audience do not know who he is. How does this happen? I'm a loser. <laughs> Pretty much. Just like Dana said, I'm a loser. <laughs> yeah. uh, said me and Karma both, dis- or, uh, both deserve to lose. So... Uh, you know, I, I guess I'm just a loser and I, I know these kind of really obscure pop culture references. And I had actually told um, at the last way in for uh, my last fight against Jason McDonald, I told Joe Silva that I was thinking about doing it. And when Joe Silva knew who the Shockmaster was and remembered him, I said, you know what, I, I think I have to do this in the future. And were you happy with the way it all played out? Oh, I thought the Shockmaster deal was great because a lot of people thought – people that didn't know what it was thought I just tripped. Yeah. So, I mean, my acting ability really took over there. Uh, so I was, I was pretty pumped up about that. It was unbelievable. I, what, I was in, in the crowd during the weigh-ins. I was in the back doing the fuel stuff. What was the, the reception that you, you got? Did you get the, 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 the impression that people knew who you were, you were paying homage to? No. No. No one knew. <laughs> I, and, and honestly, unless my cornermen um, – like if my cornermen weren't my friends and I forced them to watch the video about a hundred times, uh, then they would have no clue either. I think there was uh, Mark Hominick told me he went back and looked it up afterwards and he thought it was great. <laughs> uh, but there was very few people um, that actually knew who, who it was. Aunt Evans knew, um, you knew, uh, and I'm sure like John Pollock and, and Y knew or, you Wei know, Ting. Um, the great way. Yeah. I, yeah. And Ant Evans obviously works for the UFC, a longtime pro wrestling fan, and a huge, huge fan of this particular show, I might add. So that was it. Just those people, and uh, that was good enough for you. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, I started off with the uh, in the UFC with the Just Bleed guy. And no one in the crowd really knew who he was for the most part is my guess. Uh, but the people on the Internet um, where I spend most of my free time knew who he was. So that makes me happy. Has this become almost a blessing and a curse for you? A blessing because people love it. You're entertaining. But on the flip side, now there's a lot of pressure for you to, to come out there and, and do something special. Yeah. Yeah, there are. Uh, it, it is a catch, it's like a catch 22. It's pretty tough coming up with new ideas each time and trying to top it. Basically, I've, I'm done trying to ever top the Dan Severn impersonation. That seems to be the uh, most popular one. So I'm not sure I can ever ever do anything uh, better than that in the future. But I have a few ideas. One of them almost came to fruition because we were worried we wouldn't be able to find a Stormtrooper mask. Um, but I have one more idea really cooked up. It's going to take a while. I'll really have to... Uh, to get in character looks wise, but I think we can make it, make it happen. I got to say my favorite one was Sensei Seagal because you look like him, you dress like him, all that stuff. But because of the commission lady, you've seen the clip, I'm sure who ran oh. off and was frightened. and had no idea what was going on. That just made it for me. That to me was your, your creme de la creme. Oh, thank you very much. Um, you know, you have to love the people that work for a commission <laughs> that's holding an MMA event and has no clue probably who any of the guys on the card are. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, it was kind of fun seeing her scurry away from the action <laughs> at, a, at a blistering pace. Now, let's talk about the, the workouts, because you were the star of that as well. Who came up with the idea for the, the, the sumo, the sumo suave? It, it was fantastic. Yeah. Stole the show. Yes. However, we have um, at least temporarily disbanded. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I believe that our third member, there was, a, of course, myself and then Seth Petruzzelli who came up with the idea. He would be the, really the founding member of the Sumo Suave, uh, and he probably has the biggest belly out of the three <laughs> of us and a obnoxious Japanese tattoo on his buttocks. Uh, so he's definitely the most sumo out of the three. But our, our third member, uh, Kyle Holland, not only um, – he went up with me – for the weigh-ins and he, you know, we go by karma. We go by a karma system. He kind of blew it since I lost the fight. So now we have to switch <laughs> to, uh, to a third person. But, um, he also provided me with the funniest moment of the week for me with that interview blunder, uh, <laughs> when you asked him a question. So, uh, it was Seth's idea to answer your original question. Uh, but we have been at least temporarily disbanded. We are looking for new members and hopefully we can go on a national tour, kind of like kaiju big monster battle oh yeah and uh, uh, you know hold events worldwide and uh kevin ioli the veteran mma reporter was teasing that there's a funny story uh about how you got the the diapers can you share that with us well it's not so funny about how i got them but uh what was going on while i was getting them um i i have what would probably be i probably need to go to a doctor first of all <laughs> because i have like somewhat of an overactive bladder and then uh you know, going through the weight cutting procedure and uh, water loading during the week so that I can cut weight later on left me probably urinating about every 20 minutes or so. And um, there was, we were in the store buying the Depends, which took about 15 minutes for us to find them. And as I'm checking out, I really have to go to the bathroom. So I asked the lady at the counter, hey, do you guys have a bathroom here? No, of course not. There's one right across the street. Just go downstairs. You'll be fine. So as I'm checking out, buying the Depends, asking where a bathroom is, I'm also peeing my pants, <laughs> like noticeably peeing my pants. Not really? just like, like a speck. Oh yeah, but God. I mean, it was like a, a few inch wide um, you know, sur surface area that was covered. You couldn't hold it in? No, no, I could not. It, it hits me like that. Do you, you think? And I, don't like to, I don't like to play around, Ariel. When yeah. I want to get something done, I try to do it, you know? Do you think maybe, and maybe to tie this all together, um, there's a prostate problem going on here? Uh, I check myself pretty okay. pretty much daily uh, or nightly. <laughs> um, and I have other people help me out with that too. But oh. uh, yeah, there's probably something. There's definitely some sort of problem going on. Now, I must say, a little disappointed that I thought 15th anniversary Survivor Series, it was a no-brainer. You'd come out as either HBK or Bret Hart. Neither one of those guys showed up. No. Uh, one of the big... Things, the reason why I don't do the Bret Hart thing is because uh, the last show that was in Calgary, Nick Ring came out to his music. So mm -hmm. I don't it, really it, want it to. It was be... actually, and I know you're, you're, you're a historian of sorts. Antonio Carvalho came out to his music. Nick Ring walked out with Bret Hart. Oh, okay. That's what it was. I, I, I apologize. I was uh, 
I was somewhere and actually didn't see that fight. I forget where I was. I thought it was the opposite. Hmm. Um, or I thought that Nick Ring had come out to the song. But uh, regardless, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to be uh, – first of all, I'm not a – I mean, I, I'm not a huge Shawn Michaels fan. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, I'm probably a bigger Bret Hart fan than I am a Shawn Michaels fan. But, so. but if you came out to I'm Just a Sexy Boy in Montreal, I mean, it would have been amazing. Yeah, but I'm not. I don't want to be a liar. Okay. I don't want to true. lie on national television, uh, <laughs> especially with the look I have now. Uh, this mustache and the beard that I have it wasn't helping very much uh, with the bald head. I look more like uh, Action Bronson, the rapper yes. who tried to get in shape for a little while. <laughs> now, so where, where do you go from here? Obviously, you were coming off a really big win. Um, do you have any idea as to what they'll do with you or who you'd like to fight to try to get back in the mix here? No, nah, I mean, I just like to somebody fight somebody that's going to fight. Um, you know, I never want to have a fight like that again where I walk out of the cage and I feel like um, feel like I wasn't in a fight, you know? I'd, ra- I'd rather eat some punches. I'd rather, uh, I'd rather take some kicks. I'd rather have somebody, you know, try some takedowns, try a submission, do, do something to me um, and get caught than have a 15-minute, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of disenfranchised a little bit with, with the way the fight went and, and how it was scored. And, um, you know, I, I really, at this point, I haven't given it much thought. What do you do now for the next few days? Like how long before you get back on the horse and start training again, or is this kind of the morning period for you? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a morning period. I I feel okay. Uh, I've gotten a lot of good, you know, a lot of good feedback from fans, I guess, um, saying that they thought I won. So that eases the blow a little bit. Uh, but I'll, I'm actually, I'll probably get back in the gym tomorrow morning and train. I'm, my forearms are, you, you probably can't see it, but they're, they're really swollen. They're really sore. Um, I was thinking for a while I might actually have to retire and join, join my buddy uh, Kyle Kingsbury and maybe becoming a fireman due to the damage that I received from uh, four body kicks that I checked. <laughs> by Francis. Uh, I think I'm going to be okay. I'll probably be back in the gym tomorrow or um, you know, sometime at, at some point this week just so that I don't get too fat over the Thanksgiving holiday. By the way, how cold is it where you are right now? You're actually wearing a coat indoors. Yeah, it, well, that's because I just, I literally just got out of the car. Oh, I okay. uh, spent the day yesterday in Burlington, Vermont. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and I went, you know, I drank there and told everybody that I could that I fought in the UFC the day before. <laughs> nobody believed me. Uh, so I figured, you know what, when I got up in the morning, I'm going to drive back home where at least the girls at the Dunkin' Donuts downstairs, uh, you know, know who I am. So what, what kind of reception did you get when you came back home? Uh, one it? of my cats ran away from me <laughs> in fear. The other one laid on the ground and, uh, and let me pet her. So that was at least a plus. So, you know, we're looking at like a 50, 50 reception. Um, I think, I think they're, they were a little disappointed in my performance and the fight, but, uh, they love me nonetheless. So they watched, um, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, I think they streamed it actually. Uh, Illegally. maybe I should have. <laughs> yeah, of course. They're pirates. By the way, is it true the UFC was unhappy with your sumo uh, display on, on Thursday? Is that accurate? Uh, I haven't heard anything. Okay, go. Okay, forget I just asked that. Um, final <laughs> thing. Uh, <laughs> Were you told that? Well, I don't know. I just, you know, I'm not trying to add insult to injury here. Well, you can go ahead. I mean, nobody said anything to me, but I'd rather hear the truth than... I heard uh, it from someone close to you. High up? <laughs> no, close to you, not from the UFC. Oh. One of your people. Oh, no, I was not aware of that. If that's the case, I mean, here's the thing. If that's the case, if they tell me just to stop, I'll stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, they, they, uh, I, I was surprised. You know, I, I thought it was the, the highlight of the whole day. Yeah. I mean, only so many people can go out there and, and hit mitts and it's the same thing every time. Um, that's one of the things. I mean, if you put me in that situation and you just give me free reign, I'm, I'm going to do something different, hmm. you know? Um, one of the things that we always get told by, uh, by the brass in the UFC is to, to try to market yourself and try to make a name for yourself. Uh, some guys do that with trash talking. Some guys do it with their fighting ability. Unfortunately, I'm good at neither, so I have to come up with outlandish ideas. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't heard any feedback um, saying it was bad from, from people in the UFC. But, hey, if that's the case, then I apologize. And if they no, want me no, to stop, no. I'll stop. Forget I just said that. You shouldn't receive negative feedback. Oh. It was it was one of your guys, and I was just trying to look out to make sure that you didn't receive uh, a tongue lashing, because then I would have taken matters into my own hands if that was the case. Now, let me ask you this final thing before I let you go. Um, 
you fought there before, but I'm just wondering, other than you know the disappointment of Saturday night, Saturday night, how did my hometown treat you? Oh, I love Montreal. Every time I've been there, it's been great. Uh, I will, I will go on record right now though and say I, I will retire from fighting in Montreal. I no longer <laughs> uh, would like to do it. Every time I go, it's kind of hard to get a, a good feel for the city and uh, really enjoy my time there. And it seems that every time I fight there, I lose. Uh, more importantly, so. I would like to announce my retirement from fighting in Montreal. However, I am open to the rest of Canada, as well as the uh, 49 contiguous states of the United States and uh, areas abroad. Wow. Huge news here on the MMA Hour. Filthy Tom Lawler announces his retirement of fighting in Montreal, my hometown. A shocking ending to this interview. But uh, you always bring the goods, Tom. Appreciate it. Sorry about what happened, obviously, on Saturday. And uh, always looking forward to what's next for you. Yeah, me too, as well. Thank you very much, Ariel, and uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Well, well thank you if very you much. celebrate. Yeah, I don't really celebrate, but how about this? We'll, uh, we'll live tweet uh, Monday Night Raw together uh, tonight, okay? That'll make you feel better. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good. it's good to see you're coming around. Good to see you're actually admitting your, uh, your fanboyness uh, with wrestling. All right, Tom. Makes side. Talk to you later. All right, take care. <laughs> there he is, Filthy Tom Lawler joining us. Um, we appreciate the time, obviously a tough loss to Francis Carmont on Saturday night. I do believe I had the first and, and third rounds for Mr. Filthy, but, uh, was it for, I, I remember having two, I remember it being two to one. Very close though. It wasn't a robbery of any kind because it was so close. And as he mentioned, as Dana mentioned and everyone else, not the most, um, action packed fight of the night or of of the year.